For those of you just joining us, we are talking about new player options in Fizzbench Treasure Dragons, and Michael and I are going through some of our faves from the player options chapter, and we just talked about the new way they send a dragon monks, and now it's time to talk about the new Dragonborn. Once again, we previewed one of these when we went over the uh, D&D Celebration preview material. We talked about the... Oh, Metallic my brain went blank. Thank you. We talked about the metallic, and now we get to talk about the chromatic and the gem. Um, dragons are pushing the other dragons out of my head. Uh, it's an <laughs> in intimidation bonus that they have. Uh, and those are also contained in this. There are three new variants. They work on similar principles. So these are going to look a little bit like what we already talked about, but with some important differences. Um, so let me pop on over. Yeah, so, you know, talking about these new ancestries for Dragonborn, um, if you're wondering how does this affect the Dragonborn from the Player's Handbook, well, the the Dragonborn in the Player's Handbook is essentially going to be your, your type of Dragonborn that doesn't have a particularly strong link to any single one type of dragon. Like, you do get some elements of certain dragon's traits, for example, you know, maybe you take a little bit after a red dragon but with these ancestries these allow you to further kind of specialize as a dragonborn it these are meant for dragonborn that have a much closer relationship to certain types of dragons so your chromatic dragonborn they're going to have a stronger tie to the chromatic dragons and that's what you're going to see through these traits is um dragonborn that really emulate the different types of dragons. Did that make and sense? And the families of dragons. <laughs> it does, because being, being a standard dragonborn from the player's handbook, you can absolutely be like, red dragon, this is my red dragoniness, and you can add to that anything you want from the flavor that they've added with the new book. Um, but I like the way that they've approached grouping them now that they've introduced the third family of dragons into sort of being like, all right, what are cool ways that we can take that lore and that mythology and use it to inspire and, and group them together in that way? So a red dragon and a white dragon, uh, a red dragonborn and a white dragonborn now have something in common um, that sets them both apart from all of the gem dragonborn, which is just a really cool, fertile area to explore. Huh? And they do, I, I like that in Fizzbends, they're sort of like, by the way, there are dragonborn in the player's handbook. It's the most direct way to do this. Um, but uh, here are some cool uh, variations. <sighs> Chromatic Dragonborn. Sorry, again, the art. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, they blew it away with the, <laughs> the artwork with these these player options. My, my favorite is the Metallic Dragonborn artwork, which uh, we'll see in a little bit. You know what? Uh, we'll skip there, there right now because it's the one we just talked about. Yep. <laughs> uh, this is what what we were picturing. I'm sorry, this it's cruel of me to say that. Um, when we got to talk to you about Metallic Dragonborn, uh, this is the absolutely beautiful, joyous Metallic Dragonborn friend um, that comes with that section of the book. A Copper Dragonborn readies her acidic breath as foes approach. Uh, again, just just astonishingly beautiful stuff um, from the team on this book. Thank you so much. Okay, but now I'll be good and go back. Um, because we are, in fact, talking about the Chromatic Dragonborn. And uh, Dragonborn with Chromatic Ancestry claim the raw elemental power of Chromatic Dragons. The vibrant colors of black, blue, green, red, and white dragons gleam in those Dragonborn's scaled skin and in the deadly energy of their breath weapons. Theirs is the raw elemental fury of the volcano of biting arctic winds, and of raging lightning storms, as well as the subtle whisper of swamp and forest, toxic and corrosive. Here are your traits, humanoid medium, 30 feet, uh, and of course, chromatic ancestry. So you will choose from the chromatic ancestry table uh, when you pick, it'll determine the damage type for your other traits. Um, that will be, chromatic ancestry table here is, Black dragons, acid. 
Blue dragons, lightning. Green dragons, poison. Red dragons, fire. And white dragons, cold. Michael, you want to tell us about that breath weapon? Sure. So each of these ancestries come with your standard breath weapon, which is very similar to the breath weapon that you would see uh, that you see with the original Dragonborn. The difference here is the damage is slightly different with the breath weapon. It starts at 1d10 and scales up to 4d10 at its, at its max. Further, you can use your breath weapon a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and those reset on a long rest compared to the original Dragonborn, which uh, you would get one use of your breath weapon per short rest. So these, are, these breath weapons give you the opportunity if you're in a really tough combat to just say all right i'm going to burn all of my resources to take take these enemies down and just hammer away with your breath weapon as we saw with the monk as well when you take the attack action on your turn you can replace one of the attacks with the breath weapon whereas with the uh, player's handbook dragonborn it took an action to use that breath weapon so there's a little more flexibility in how you use your breath weapon. Um, I believe the damage on average is less at you know these early levels, but once you hit like fifth level, then it starts to be equal or more then. Oh, I did not check, but I believe you. Hmm? <laughs> um, uh, and we will see that each of the new families of Dragonborn have a breath weapon, but you do get some differences between them as well. Um, so you get your draconic resistance, resistance to the damage type associated with your ancestry, which makes sense. And then at fifth level, if you are in the chromatic dragon family, starting at fifth level as an action, you can channel your draconic energy to protect yourself. For one minute, you become immune to the damage type associated with your chromatic ancestry. Once you use this trait, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. What do we think of chromatic warding? As soon as I read this trait, the first thing that came to mind was a wizard. That is a red dragonborn, wanders into the middle of combat, and just drops fireballs on top of himself over and over and over uh, after <laughs> using chromatic warding, of course, <laughs> to give yourself immunity to the fire damage. <laughs> oh, but there's a that, very, like, it's a very cool? like <laughs> Elsa wandering around going cold doesn't bother me anyway. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> fire! <laughs> Uh, that's terrifying. I'm very excited. Um, I love. I, I yeah. I think it's a really cool trait. It's very straightforward, very simple, but there's a lot of opportunity there, right? So if you're making your character with your friend, who is who you're saying like, okay, we've been traveling together forever, uh, you can kind of like conspire with one another, like, oh, okay, you're going to be taking burning hands at first level? Well, then maybe I'm a red dragonborn. And and that's why we paired up, because you can't hurt me with your burning hands. I don't there's, know. Just there's, oh, I love that. There's a lot of beautiful story possibilities in being like you and my best friend, the only one who can withstand me accidentally setting off spells all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't have to worry I, about uh, your wild magic sorcerer uh, blowing you up. <laughs> Um, Michael, will you talk a little bit more about thoughts on how you would approach the chromatic dragonborn while I figure out why my camera, uh, is not playing nice? Sure thing. So kind of going back to the breath weapon, what I love about these new breath weapons that we're seeing with these dragonborn ancestries is that you can replace an attack with your breath weapon. So if you're a paladin or fighter, when you have extra attack, these Dragonborn give you the opportunity to kind of mix things up a little bit more, to adapt to whatever s- combat scenario you find yourself in. So, of course, these breath weapons are going to be better just by default when, you, when you're when you facing multiple enemies, when you can hit multiple enemies and get more value out of the damage you deal. Uh, but they're also just very flavorful. Um, I know with the, the Chromatic Dragonborn actually are... Of, of the three ancestries that we, we have, they're the ones that get the a 30-foot line, whereas the other two get a 15-foot cone, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, with the Dragonborn from the Player's Handbook, you kind of got either a cone or a line based off of 
which ancestry you pick there. But the chromatic dragonborn sets itself apart from these ancestries based off of the fact that you do get that 30 foot line, which I think is just another way to kind of, it's just another cool flavorful thing that uh, is part of these particular ancestries. Something particularly aggressive about that shape. Um, I'm going to break my camera more often because that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, and in the meantime, let's talk gem dragonborn. So obviously these folks were some of the first images that we saw from Fizzbands, um, which made me immediately realize I needed them in my life. This is a sapphire, amethyst, and emerald dragonborn all sitting around swapping stories around the fire. And as you can see, gem dragons famously possess psionics. So all our little gem dragonborn here have adorable little floating things over their heads, which is just one of my favorite character design details. Gem Dragonborn partake of the heritage of Gem Dragons, who claim to be heirs of Sardior, the Ruby Dragon. The colors and mysterious powers of Gem Dragons, Amethyst, Crystal, Emerald, Sapphire, and Topaz, gleam in these Dragonborn's scaled skin and course through their veins. Theirs are the wonders of the mind, the force of will, the brilliant light of insight, and the resounding echo of discovery, but also the desiccation of despair <laughs> first thoughts on the gem dragonborn that last line's a little dramatic <laughs> the is, desiccation but, of uh, despair <laughs> but then i read about the topaz dragons and i was like okay whoa we are yeah, doing that's the fair. whole decay terrifying thing uh and i love it i i the of the three ancestries of the gem dragonborn are my favorite with the metallic dragonborn being a close second but what I love about the Gem Dragonborn is that you really do get to emulate the psionics of the Gem Dragons. So my favorite of these uh, of the traits that you get is psionic mind. You can send telepathic messages to any creature you can see within 30 feet. You don't need to share a language with them in order for them to understand your messages, but it has to be able to understand at least one language. And this particular trait, the first thing I thought of was Wild Shaping Druid, because as someone who's played a Wild Shaping Druid or a Druid who spent a lot of time in Wild Shape, having to communicate in paw clapping and clawing messages into the floor, you know, it can take some time. So Psionic Mind lets you kind of communicate a little better with, with your allies in that way. Uh, you also can be passing secret messages to one another um i I, I don't believe they can respond to you but you can be you know maybe your bard is the one who is talking to the king and you're passing along information like hey by the way uh the king looks really mad at you uh maybe you don't want to mention that you know it, it creates a lot of fun role play opportunity there I mean, they're just infinite uses for this. Like you're, you know, they're playing cards and you're standing on the other side of the room being like, he's got four twos. Um, I just, <laughs> I'm just saying the possibilities are endless. Exactly. Uh, now, of course, your gem ancestry will also let you choose a type of dragon from the table. Um, here are our five, and this is going to be brand new, of course, our gem dragons, other than the preview that we had of the sapphire, our new 2 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So, if you've chosen amethyst, damage type, force. If you've chosen crystal, damage type, radiant. If you've chosen emerald, damage type, psychic. If you've chosen sapphire, damage type, thunder. And if you've chosen topaz, our little goth friends, damage type, necrotic. I'm going to keep returning to this just because that was the biggest surprise for me when I was reading through, uh, not not being particularly familiar with gem dragons myself in the past, um, was sort of like Topaz, the dragons of entropy and decay. That Wow, there's just a lot going on with the Topaz dragons, and I'm instantly fascinated. Huh? Uh, well, my, I have to say my, my favorite of these damage types uh, has got to be Amethyst, if only because of how strange and cool your breath weapon is going to look when you just open your mouth and just force comes out <laughs> what, <laughs> what does that look like <laughs> that 
That's a great question. I'm thinking of the way, like in comic books, when somebody is using sound-based powers, like Banshee or Siren from the X-Men side of Marvel Comics, like they just draw them in waves. Um, and I feel like it's it's something like that. It's just a shimmering in the air, expanding out in all directions. Um, but that's like incredible power to wound. Hmm? Yeah. I don't know. Tell me what you think force, force damage looks like. It's cool as heck. What else? We Mike, also you get. Tell us about the... mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you want to tell us about the breath weapon you get when you're a gem dragonborn? Yeah. So this one's in a. It, it functions in the same way as the chromatic dragon's breath weapon, except that this one's in a 15 foot cone. It, it targets dex saving throws, just the same. Uh, it scales off of your Constitution modifier, and the damage is the same. It's 1d10 damage of the type associated with your gem ancestry. So if you're looking at uh, this table of the different damage types you can be dealing, you're going to find that for the most part, these damage types are going to be less resisted by enemies. In particular, I believe force is the least resisted of damage types among monsters, uh, in case that's something that you're considering or thinking about. Uh, and as usual, you can replace one of your attacks with the exhalation of with the exhalation of magical energy. So um I'm sorry, I think I misspoke, but I've lost my train of thought. But you can replace <laughs> one of your attacks with the use of your breath weapon, just in the yeah. same way as you can with the other dragonborns. And so as the chromatic dragon had that immunity uh ability you could turn on, and we we talked last time about the metallic dragon having an extra second breath weapon, which is just you know, extra on several levels. I'm just saying, uh, if you are a gem dragonborn, you get something cool at fifth level. Michael, what do you get? You get gem flight. You get spectral wings that you can summon as a bonus action. What? They last for a minute. <laughs> uh, and, and during the duration, you can you have a fly speed equal to your walking speed. And you can do this once for long rest. That is so cool. You could just... <laughs> You just have wings to just pop out of you. Um, I, I think I think this may require a discussion with the dungeon master, but I believe this trait might work while you're in wild shape. Uh, kind of depends on whether your wild shape form can uh, accommodate spectral wings. But that's something that's really cool and something to consider. Uh, and it also I just love adds that a lot idea. of. Yeah, and it adds a lot of maneuverability. You know, at fifth level, that's when your your most of your casters are, are going to be getting fly. Um, so if you're playing a a fighter or you're playing a barbarian, um, this particular trait is going to give you access to increased maneuverability, which is going to be really important as you scale up in those levels and start facing enemies that are going to have more advanced tactics. And it just looks and cool. I don't know yeah spectral wings. There's also spectral wings um the monk gets spectral <laughs> wings the fairies can fly the gem dragonborn gets spectral wings it's just getting very cool and flighty up in here um but <laughs> i i also like i i don't know if this is why this goes with the gem dragonborn but for me it makes sense in a really cool way that uh the psionics that are keeping your little bits of gem hovering over you and that are the hallmark trait of the gem dragonborn are kind of letting you telekinetically throw yourself around if you're if that's what the spectral wings represent. Um, and that makes sense to me, and I think it's cool. And I feel a little bad for the other dragonborn that they can't fly, um, but they get cool stuff as well. That's a really cool image, actually, is all of the little spines and things that are floating around you just form these beautiful wings that just, like, cover your back. I really love pretty. that. Um, so let's see. If we were building in our thing, we've chosen our monk, um, and we wanted, just so we know, this is what it would look like when you go to build your dragonborn. You're going to see dragonborn one, base race, three variants. So that's your player's handbook dragonborn, your chromatic, your gem, and your metallic um, as you are choosing uh, um, where you will land. And of course they use the new structure for ability score increases, languages and alignment that we've talked about a little bit on the channel. Uh, and then you are off to the races. 
final thoughts on on rolling up some dragonborn michael do you have any ideas that might go with these um as i said druid with the dram dragonborn uh check with your dm if they would allow you to use gem flight uh because that is a really great image of a bear with spectral wings who can speak telepathically Little and spectral wings yeah <laughs> but also you know i keep talking about druid as a gem dragon board but these uh ancestries work really well with any of the classes um the chromatic dragonborn the gem dragonborn uh it specifically particularly the metallic dragonborn all work really well as uh your rogues or your fighters anybody who's going to be wandering into melee um you're going to get a lot of use out of these these traits and they're really going to make you feel more unique. Um, I think they the the different ancestries also have a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences that really make you feel as though like I am a gem dragonborn, and this Sorry, is you know. I don't have an answer for that. That was my. <laughs> um, yeah, you're going to feel really unique with these different. Uh, with the, the variety of traits that you're going to be, uh, mm -hmm. that you're going to have as a character. And you've convinced your uh, devices that they need to pick their own forms of Dragonborn. Clearly, they're all getting in on it. Um, and we were yes. talking a little bit about, <laughs> uh, off the air, about the fact that now that this book comes with a ton of information about the different dragons and deepening their personalities and their potential worldviews and their like frequent traits, um, and that can all be incredible inspiration, where if you're sort of, you know, there's a bunch of them that I'm kind of like, oh, interesting. The bookish one who collects facts about humans. That's neat. That's an, a fantastic model to build something on. Pick a dragonborn of the correct matching type and you have an immediate set of inspirations for how you might put a, a character or put, you don't, you're never stuck with any set of those personality traits, obviously, um, especially when you're rolling up a player character. Um, but if you're looking for inspiration, you have an entire book of it now to throw at your dragon board. All right, what would you do with a chromatic or a metallic? Uh, what would I do with them? Like yeah, any thing? ideas for building? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metallic dragonborn, I would go with monk. The metallic dragonborns, uh, their repulsion breath can knock enemies prone, which is going to give you advantage with uh your flurry of blows it's you're gonna deal a ton of damage and it's just gonna feel <laughs> really cool and i think it really matches the ascendant dragon subclass as well are is there a specific uh build that you have in mind that you would want to do with one of these dragonborn well that's something i should have also considered but i do love um honestly I do love the idea of using the Chromatic Dragonborn's selective immunity based on the idea you had earlier to build just like the super tankiest like barbarian or fighter who will buddy up with a spellcaster and just be like the designated, yeah, okay, turning on the fire immunity, let's do this. Um, <laughs> I, I, I love that, the idea of that dynamic very, very much and now kind of want to specifically build one just for that. Um, so yeah, looking for a, a foolish wizard or sorcerer to accidentally blow me up several times. Um, <laughs> I'm going to hang a sign by the tavern that says extremely tanky dragonborn seeks traveling companion. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've also had a lot of fun looking at the various gem dragons within this book for inspiration of like personality traits for the gem dragonborn. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of share maybe some summaries of what some of these gem dragons are kind of like and what their interests oh, are. Absolutely. Sweet. So if you're looking at the amethyst, amethyst dragon, they're typically going to want to be studying the nature of the planes of existence, the cosmic forces, the distant worlds that exist in the multiverse. They enjoy teleportation magic and similar spells and like to just examine the nature of the multiverse, the, everything that is around them, which I think is really awesome for if you're going to be a gem dragonborn, you're looking for inspiration for maybe your wizard character. Maybe they come from amethyst dragons. You know, these are the types of dragons that are really going to be asking very big philosophical questions. 
Then you have your emerald dragons, which they generally avoid dealing with other intelligent creatures. They kind of prefer to be alone, but they're willing to be around others who can teach them more about history and culture. So although maybe they're shy, they uh, a dragonborn that is uh, of the emerald type would have a fascination with others. So maybe they befriend your local bard or other individuals who are going to be very talkative and have a lot of history and culture to share with your character. Or maybe they are the bard because even though they may shy away from performance, they love to just learn new things from other people. The sapphire dragon, which we have seen before, uh, they're generally solitary. These are the dragons that love to learn more tactics. They enjoy games like dragon chess, and they will uh, ally with others in order to bolster the defenses of their layers. So perhaps a sapphire dragonborn is going to be your battle master fighter, or is going to be your monk who is very careful about how they're positioning themselves on the battlefield. And they're really thinking tactically, like, okay, if you move over there, then you can do this, and you can do this. So this is the type of Perhaps this is the type of character that is leading those strategy uh, those strategy meetings before the big boss fight. And then you also have your crystal dragon. These are friendly and sociable. Um, I have to say personality wise, they are my favorite of the gem dragons. I love sociable having sociable characters that just get along well with others and and can dance around uh, the the difficulties of, of conversation. But they also love uh, seeing the stars. Their lairs are built atop great mountains where they have clear view of the skies. So they're really thinking about the um, celestial bodies. And they like quartz. Like, who doesn't, who doesn't want to just, like, collect some quartz? I've got a bowl of quartz downstairs. So, <laughs> like, these... these uh, Wait, okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a number of clues adding up. Uh, I mean, uh, Crystal Dragonborn confirmed. I'm just. Uh... <laughs> I don't know because um, uh, I don't know. I didn't know. I'm a carrionette, remember? <laughs> I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm actually a haunted doll in a man's body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll have to get my conspiracy theory straight about the true nature of Michael Galvis, but this is a strong contender. <laughs> hmm? Um, and then, uh, and, did you want to talk about the topaz dragons? Because I feel like that's that was one of your favorite. My entropy right? friends, uh, they just they stand out to me in such a really fun way. Where like you know, my normal instincts. Anyone who's seen me play will know that I'm like all the curious dragons, all the knowledge hoarding dragons fascinate me. Um, but what I didn't see coming uh, were these topaz dragons, um, who are a incredibly cool looking. <sighs> but be embodiment of decay. Um, so they have some really interesting features. They love to be by the ocean uh, and that combined with the idea of entropy and decay, like what does the ocean do? The ocean wears everything away. It grinds everything down. Um, it, it like it rots things as well. It's also a beautiful and full of life, but that's a different element. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I love that the idea of the crystal dragons Obviously not, not dragons can be of any alignment or attitude about the world, but in addition to this conflict that's long been brewing, that's sort of chromatic versus metallic, you have this in some ways neutral force of the gem dragons. Um, and as I was reading through the other descriptions, I was just like, yeah, neutral, except I would, I would hang out with all of these dragons. These are pretty cool folks. And then it's just like, right, neutrality can extend to things like it's not decay in an evil way. It's just, hey, that's nature. Things fall apart. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this dragon has that essence in it, in its potential personalities, in its choice of lair, uh, and it's, it, you know, all of the things that come with being a dragon, which are expanded on in this book, such as their ways of interacting with other people, the ways they build their lair, their regional effects. Uh, it all ties into um, this really, I thought, fascinating. Decay and despair are bound up in the nature of topaz dragons, thanks to the necrotic energy of the negative plane that suffuses them. Um, and uh, me... I think that's cool. 
Yeah, I think that's beautiful. It really makes me think of, you know, nature clerics or any type of character that's going to be dealing with death on a regular basis. It, it's someone who has come to terms with the fact that life does end and that is natural and not necessarily bad. It's, oh my because gosh, you're, I think anything, I just fell in love with, <laughs> with Anything from your dragons. grave clerics to your like circle of spores druids that are just sort of like, look, life is a lot of things. Life is growth, but also life is decay. And like, you know, it's all bound up together. That's just how it works. Um, and uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. And that is all the time we have for today. We obviously have so much more we want to dive into about this book. There are a lot of other ways to, uh, if you don't choose one of the dedicated paths we talked about today, there are even more ways to make your character tied into the world of dragons that we will talk about on future shows uh, because I think that's really cool and it makes you not constrained. There aren't only two classes that can be dragony. There isn't only one player uh, race where you can tie yourself into dragons and they're trying to lay out those possibilities in what I think is a really, really fun way. Um, I'm so sorry to the folks who sent questions. Uh, we got excited and I got carried away and didn't throw them at you. But Michael, your shirt is great. Chat wants you to know. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> where can the people find you until we're back next time? Hey, you can find me on Twitter at Michael Galvis and here on d, &D Beyond. And I do want to shout out that uh, Celebrating Fizzbands, we have been publishing articles about some of the material that you're going to find in that book. Uh, yesterday, we had a really, I published a really great write-up on the different feats that you could find in the book. We have a free adventure that uh, gives you the Crystal Dragon Lair map for free. And uh, and we also have discussion on the Metallic Dragon Board, which I have just recently updated this morning uh, using some new information from the book. Cannot wait to keep diving into it. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us and we will see you next time on D&D &D Beyond. It's D &D.